What's up guys, Chris here back with the second video of the frame disassembly reassembly for the Cybergun slash WE Desert Eagle .50A gas blowback pistol. And we're gonna start off where we left off by reassembling the, the hammer housing. So let me clear this out and uh, we'll take a closer look at that. Let's um, start off where we left off with the sear. And this is a little bit of a tricky part to install because the spring needs to be kept in place in here. And the sear needs to be slid into place like this because if you hook it on to uh, the pin and the spring, it's not actually going to clear at the top right here. So here's what I found. The spring wants to sit like this inside and the short leg, let's see, this is the right hand side over here. This is the left hand side. So the spring wants to go with the short leg towards the right hand side and it wants to sit in that little cutout right here but from the inside. So let's see if I can zoom in even closer. And what I like to do, take the spring like this, holding the long leg, drop the short leg into place down in here. Now I can't actually see what I'm doing. Uh, right in there somewhere. It doesn't really matter uh, as long as the short leg is to the right side and going in like this. So just try and get started in here. This is really difficult when I don't have my head right above it. <clears throat> Anyway, the trick here is you get a punch that is one size smaller than the actual pinhole. Let's see if I have a more suitable punch here. Hmm. Let's see, is this? Yeah, I think that's even better actually. So what you do, Drop the spring in. Let's see, how the heck am I going to do this? Like this. Then use the punch to hook the spring on. Okay. Uh, let's see. like that okay so we got the short leg sitting in here and the long leg is right here and with the punch in place <clears throat> take the sear in this orientation i gotta zoom out a little bit here and s s get the long leg of the spring started in this hole you can see the spring is along the leg of the spring is right here slide the sear in keeping downward pressure so that the spring goes with it like this right and then while applying pressure back here See if I can move my finger to the bottom of the sear. You want to pull your wow, this is super difficult to actually capture on camera. I'm gonna have to read. All right, take two. Put the sear in with uh, downward pressure, slowly pull out your punch. And you want to put pressure back here. 
right and the sear drops in place then you go back in with your punch Whew. okay so now we have it secured in the hammer housing so the sear has rearward spring motion at this point and basically all you do now is replace your punch with the actual pin and remember tang is to the rear this is the left this is the right pin goes in left to right so you want to carefully back out the punch at the same time as we're pushing the pin in and you might have to do some wiggling here to get things to align Let's see, I don't want to lose this now. Thank God. Second attempt, I'll take it. Uh, I think it took me like 10 attempts the first time I did this. So the pin is in, the spring is in place, short leg is resting right here, long leg is going like this, and the sear is on top with rearward spring motion. Perfect. What we want to do now is, if possible, even more fiddly, Right, so what we want to do now is install this, um, what's it called? The valve knocker spring in place. And it sits on this pin, which is the second smallest pin. And it, how the fuck am I gonna? Basically, you see there's a slot right here with a little cutout down there. And the spring would sit like that. So we just want to go ahead and get that in there. Um, alignment doesn't really matter right now. We just want to get it in and on the pin. So again, left to right. There's no way I'm going to be able to get this on camera, but the inner leg right there is already getting caught in the back, but we'll fix that in a second. So just try and align the pin like so. And then we're going to have to go in Let's see. Anyway, the goal here is that the inner leg of the spring that you can see right there, we need to poke that up so that it rests on um, <laughs> this is incredibly difficult. Rests on Yeah, 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 right there. So currently it's stuck down there. We need to sort of poke it up so that it's poke, poking up right there. So I'm gonna get a very small flat head and try to get in here somehow. Okay, a little bit of a life hack here. If you Take a very small flathead screwdriver. You go in this hole on the sear right here. Then you can come up in between these two slots and let's see if I can catch it. Poke the spring up just like that. 
And when you let go, it's going to be sitting right there, okay? And you want to sort of align it to the center as best as you can. Okay, then what you want to do is take your valve knocker in this orientation. So it wants it to curve upwards. And we're going to fiddle it in here with the help of a pair of pliers. And the, the back legs are going to be seating in this hole right here. But at the same time, you want to catch that little spring leg inside of this cutout. And God help me. So it wants to come out. Whoop. Right. So you want to sort of just get it in there. That's fine. And right now, the spring is actually not. Ay, ay, ay. The spring is actually not inside of there. You see that. That's the spring leg that we need to get caught in that little cutout. So let's see how we do this. I don't recall this being this difficult, but basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to use the hack that I just told you about to come in and let's see, poke. poke that spring leg up that's back in here up and then drop down the valve knocker I there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this on camera so you'll have to forgive me so there's my flat head wiggling let's see and there's the spring so you can see how I used the flat head to poke the spring up and uh, forward and up and at the same time it slots into the the valve knocker um i'm not gonna lie that was um i don't really recall how i did it the first time but the valve knocker wants to have a rearward spring action so if you push it forward it's going to spring back and you can see when we do that You can actually see the spring poking out right there. Whew. I think I'm going to have to uh, take a break here and um, reload my camera with the new battery and memory card. I'll be right back. All right, so I got it new battery and a new memory card in. And we got the sear installed and we have the valve knocker installed. So this is what it looks like from the front. Left side, right side, top and bottom. So, what we want to do next is 
uh, let's see, did I do something stupid here? Did we need the hammer in place first? Nope, I think we can do that now, fine. So let's go ahead and install the hammer. And basically this brass rod goes through here. Uh, the hammer sits in like so, and the brass tube uh, lines up with this hole right here. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go ahead and get this brass tube started in here. And there's a little bit. There we go. And slide it in from under. Line it up. Poke the brass tube in and the hammer is in place. So now what we want to do is place this little thingy. Uh, let's see which way did it go. Okay, I've just put some uh, lubrication on here, but basically the plate goes in like this and to make the installation of the spring that goes in down here uh, a little bit easier. You want to make sure the hammer is not cocked. If it goes down here and locks, you need to pull the sear forward like that. And then you can push the hammer back up. So next up, we're going to put the plate cover on top. This right here which goes on like this. Want to make sure the brass tube is aligned on both sides. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of the uh, thread locker here before I install the screws. The final part to reassembling the hammer housing is installing this tiny spring right in here. And to do that, we want to make sure, again, the hammer is not cocked. We want to push this plate up like that and hopefully sort of keep it there. That's just going to make it easier to get the spring in. And there's actually a tiny leg right in here or a nub. That sort of helps the spring sit into place. So we want to push it in. Let's see if I can do this up here. Push the spring in on the, whoop, on the leg first and then push the bottom part in until it drops down and seats without it going flying. Just like that. Now you see when the hammer is cocked, the spring gets compressed. And thanks to the nub, it's not very prone to uh, flying out, which is good. So we're going to leave the hammer housing in this condition. And this is, well, actually, no, we're not, because we need to install, as if we haven't had enough trouble, we need to install the hammer spring. 
And let's see. The hammer spring goes in with the, oh, I gotta zoom out a little bit. You can see that uh, the top part is a little bit tapered compared to the bottom. So the top part wants to go up against this leg. Otherwise it's gonna slip off and get stuck. And I know that because I tried it. So then once we're here, we, we actually don't want the hammer cocked. We need to compress the spring and at the same time get this retention thingy on top in that orientation, right? So it's a little bit curved towards the top right now. And of course the spring is supposed to be on here and compress the spring push it in here and slide it up into these two slots. And now we're gonna try what I was trying uh, during disassembly. Get my pliers. Oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. This is gonna go bad. I'm terribly sorry, but there's, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get that on camera. Basically, you need to compress the spring and get this retention piece on top. Push it down enough so that it clears and can click into place into the slots right here. Um, you know, I had to do it real, like, real tight up against my body to, to uh, get control over it. And as you can see, when the spring is fully compressed, uh, which you need to have uh, to be able to get it in here. There's really not much room for error. So uh, hopefully you get the idea of how this is installed. So, <clears throat> That is the hammer housing completed. And I've only done this once before, but again, I don't recall it being this difficult. One last thing, now that we've actually had this installed, we can get a bit of a better look at uh, the tiny spring for the valve knocker, which is right there. And it sits in this cutout. All right, let's try and put this thing back together. I'm getting a little bit tired and frustrated here right now. So I think what we'd want to do is drop in the front chassis first. Let's see if that works. And then we want to get the trigger started right in here. And remember, here's, here's the, the spring that's locking in. Let's see if we can get a good angle on this. You can see, well, you can't really, but the spring sits in the cutout right there. We have the inner frame in, we are going to drop in the trigger and sort of try to line up the hole as best we can. Let's see. There we go. And we want to try and uh, keep pressure off the spring that's going to put retention on the slide release lever. So something like this. Get that in there and then the slide release spring. This little uh, hook right here goes into that hole.
So the spring is in the hole. The slide release lever pin is going through the trigger. We have pressure off from the spring. And we're simply going to slide that into place. Push the trigger and trigger bar back like so. Whew. Next up, we need to drop in the, uh, the uh, hammer housing and it actually, uh, let's see, I've got this a little bit greased up, but this bar right back here sits in here. Let's see if we can go in close. You can see right there is a little bit of a, hmm. Right back there. Let me show you actually. Well, that doesn't really help, I guess, but so it hooks on to the sear. So we want to get that hooked on there and hopefully we can wiggle it in. Push it down, get it into place. And at this point, we need to get the pins for the body. Or I'm sorry, the hammer housing, which there are two uh, pins that are the same size. <clears throat> and if we recall, they, they go in from left side to right side and with the knurling on the left hand side. So looks like they're pretty much aligned. So we're gonna put one down here. That one's pretty easy. Goes right in. One up here, we're gonna need a punch. You wanna make sure this is aligned since the slide is actually gonna ride sort of on top of where that pin is seated. So we need to make sure it goes all the way in. And we have a little bit more room. You can tell that it's not sticking out on this side. And it's not sticking out on this side. We can actually punch it in a little bit more. just to be safe. And finally, to get all of this <clears throat> secured, we want to install the screw up here in the front inner chassis. Again, just gonna put a little bit of thread locker on here. Uh, while we're working back here, let's go ahead and reinstall the grip, uh, grip retention block. I guess we can call this. So it goes in like this. Whoop. And there's actually a cutout right here that it fits into. So we just drop it in, hold it in place, get this tiny pin left to right, knurling on the left hand side. And this basically has 
new uh, retention on its own. We're going to start off by putting the spring on top of the disassembly button, like so. And there's actually a little bit of a cutout here where the lever is going to hook into. But we'll worry about that later. Drop the button in right here. Sort of make sure it pokes out on the other side. And put the lever in. And we want to flip it, sort of sit it like this. Push the button in, make sure the cutout is facing upward. And then put the lever into place. Actually, it would help if, let's see. Right, so you need to get it aligned on actually on the other side as well. Hmm, a little bit fiddly, but you'll figure it out. So we go from this to this, drop it in, and you can see that it's slanted. Then just go in here and push it in. Okay, so we have two parts left now to get this back together. I, I have to apologize, I, this is not a very good video. I'm actually super tired and uh, getting a little bit frustrated here. So, but anyway, we need to put this stuff back together in the grip. We're gonna need that. We're gonna need the C-clip and the spring. So the spring, goes in here and this assembly goes into the grip like this and you're sort of going to have to wiggle it into place same way as we got it out Ah, right. You don't want to put the spring in first because it actually goes over um, this plastic piece right here. So let's go ahead and put the spring in now. <clears throat> like that. And this rod, let's see, it would go in. Yep, goes in this orientation with the thin part towards the top of the grip. And this is the cutout for the C-clip right here. So the, fi <clears throat> the final challenge here is gonna be getting this in place, pushing it halfway up until the cut for the C-clip shows and push the C-clip back on. And this is one of those things that probably impossible to get on camera. And as soon as I moved off camera, it actually worked. Let's see, there we have the rod and there are is the C-clip. You can barely see it, but right. Why is it focusing? Right there, this is the C-clip. Doesn't really matter. So 
All we have to do now is pry the grip back onto the frame. And here are the tabs that I was talking about. And they go sort of in here on the inside. Let's uh, go ahead and put the grip back on. So what you want to do is get it started over the body of the frame. And it's usually easier if you um, put pressure at the top first. So up here and it's going to snap on. Just make sure we align it. snaps in and then you want to make sure um, that this plunger goes in the hole right here so let's give it a go there we go the grip is back on so I'm just gonna put some uh, lubric lubric <laughs> lubrication here on the rails, but that is pretty much the frame done back together. I got the rails lubed up as you can see, nice and shiny. And pretty much the only thing left to do is put the slide back on the frame or perhaps the other way around if you want. Um, so what we're gonna do is we wanna cock the hammer, push down on the trigger bar. Just make sure it's moving smoothly. Uh, get your slide and barrel. Line these up. Like so. Push them back together. Uh, it actually helps if you have the takedown lever in the down position. Let's see, put some pressure on the front and flip the lever back up. Cock the slide and uh, make sure that it moves without flying off. I am, um, I just looked at the time here and I've been doing this recording session for three and a half hours. So my apologies if this video is not top notch quality. Uh, I am not going to be re-recording it because this is, you know, these videos kind of suck to do, to be honest, it's not fun. So you're gonna have to uh, just live with this. Hopefully it tells you what you need to know in order to disassemble and reassemble this pistol and that's going to be it for this video and definitely it's good this is going to be it for tonight i'm done uh, i'll see you guys in the next video bye